While looking for work as an underground cartoonist, Kevin Eastman was introduced to fellow cartoonist Peter Laird after a mutual acquaintance thought they had a shared interest in the same kind of weird shit. In 1983, Laird's living room was renamed Mirage Studios, and there they began work on their first long-form comic, The Fugitoid. But as the late nights mounted, it was the drawings they did for fun that got them really excited. I did a drawing to make Peter laugh. He thought it was funny and did a drawing to top my drawing. Changed some things, fixed some things, and then I had to top his drawing. So I did four of them, all standing together with different weapons. So literally the next day, we get up and we said, let's write a story to tell how they got to be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. As inspiration for that story, they turned to Frank Miller, thinly homaging, if not full-blown satirizing, the writer-artist's work on Daredevil. In Daredevil, Matt Murdock rescues an elderly pedestrian from an out-of-control truck, but is blinded and ultimately mutated by the truck's radioactive cargo. In Turtles lore, that radioactive canister bounces off the boy's head, smashes a bowl of baby turtles, who fall along with the canister into an open manhole. There, a rat named Splinter finds the turtles in a pool of radioactive ooze and goes on to become their father figure and sensei in an homage to Daredevil's stick. Soon thereafter, the turtles took on the evil ninja clan of the foot, a reference to Daredevil's foe, the hand. Borrowing $1,300 from Eastman's uncle, they printed 3,000 copies. The series took off almost immediately and became a global bonanza, yielding iterations of the turtles that have lasted nearly 40 years.